Okay, we're going to continue with number 18. So it says solve the logarithmic equation. Remember, ln is a logarithm, it's just a base e. So if I want to get rid of a log base e, I have to apply the exponential base e on both sides. So then the exponential base e and the log base e will cancel. And then to solve for x, I would have to divide by 8. So I get that x equals e to the 6.4 over 8. That is an expression I can type in my calculator, clear. Um, e raised to the 6.4 over 8 is and it does say round, um, fill in the complete choice. Oh, enter an exact answer. So you don't want to put that in the calculator. You want to leave it exactly the way it was. Um, but I do want to put it in the calculator to verify that it is positive because the X is inside an argument. And if I take this positive arg um, response and I multiply it by a positive eight, I will get a positive argument right here. And that makes, that verifies that this is actually a solution. But when you type it in there, they want you to type the exact form, not the decimal form. Okay, here we have number 19, wants us to solve this. Again, I have a log base two, so I'm gonna use the exponential base two on both sides. And so here these cancel, I get 5x minus 5 equals 2 to the 1 is just 2. So if I add 5 to both sides, I get 5x equals 7. And if I divide both sides by 5, I get that x equals 7 fifths. Now will that result in a positive argument? Um, 5 times 7 fifths will be 7 minus 5 is going to be 2. And that is a positive argument. So this is going to be my solution, 7 fifths. Now here, we have log base 10. So I want to apply the exponential base 10 to both sides. But I can't do that unless I have just one log, OK? Um, you can have one log on both sides. As long as everything is logs, then you can have just log on this side, log on that side. So I can combine these two to make one log. That means I would have to actually multiply their arguments. And then if I do the, this is actually a base 10, right? When there's nothing written, automatically a 10. So I can do 10 raised to this side and 10 raised to that side. And what happens is, is the logarithmic parts cancel. And so I just get 3x plus 2 times 4 equal to 11x plus 12. And I can go ahead and distribute that to try to solve for x. So minus 11x minus 8 so that I move the constant over here and I move these variables over there. So I get x equals to 4. Make sure that that makes positive arguments. If I plug it in here, I get 14, that's good. If I plug four in here, I get 44 plus 12, which is 56, that's good. So I do get one answer and it is four. Over here, it's the same thing, okay? You wanna make sure that you get the logs together. So I'm gonna have log base 12, but a minus sign means I'm gonna have the first argument divided by the second argument. And then because it's log base 12, you can use the exponential base 12 on both sides. But then these will cancel here, these will cancel here. So you're just left with one argument equal to the other argument. Now, how do I solve problems that have fractions? Multiply both sides by the common denominator. Here it cancels. And over here, you actually have to distribute. And so then now I need to solve for x. I'm going to minus x on both sides, and then I'm going to move the 15 over there by minusing 15 on both sides. So this is gone. 
Here I get 2x and that is gone. Now I divide by 2, I get that x equals negative 9. We have to make sure it doesn't make any of the arguments negative. If I plug in negative 9 here, I'm going to get negative 12, which does make this argument negative. So this answer does not work. And because it was the only answer I, I uh, found, then that means I'm going to say that there is no solution. Okay. And it's the same thing as saying the solution is the empty set because I'm not going to have anything inside the solution set. It's going to be empty. Now I do have one extra problem um, that I'm going to cover when it comes to the log equations, but I'll save that for the very last problem that I do. Okay. Um, for number 22, this says how much time will be needed for this much to grow to this much if 4% is compounded quarterly? And they do give me the formula here, and I'm guessing they're using K instead of N. So N should be quarterly, which is four, but we're just gonna call it K, because that's the value, that's the letter they chose to use in their formula. Um, but this is what I'm gonna start with, and then this is what I wanna end up with, and my rate is gonna be 0 0.04. So let's plug in all the numbers where they belong in the equation. Now, I can get rid of the coefficient. So let me see here. I have 19,541.06 over 17,000. And I get this decimal. Um, I don't want to round that decimal. So I'm going to leave this as a fraction because if I round too soon, um, my answer could be off and I don't want to have the wrong answer just because I rounded too soon. Now here you can simplify that one plus 0 0.04 over four. The inside is just 1.01. .01. Now this is an exponential. So in order for you to solve an exponential, you have to use log with the same base. So I'm going to have log with this base of this weird fraction. And then I'm going to have log with that same base of the other side. And so here, this will all cancel. And I'll be left with this really humongous, ugly expression. equal to 4t. And then to solve for t, I'm just going to divide by 4. Now you can type this in your calculator, but it's going to take some manipulation. So I do have one big giant fraction with the 4 at the bottom. And in the numerator, I'm going to have uh, ln of the old base over ln of the, um, I'm sorry, ln of the argument over ln of the old base. So be careful. I'm going to draw one fraction in my calculator, and that's for this fraction bar. So in the bottom, I'm going to put the 4, and in the top, I'm going to have another fraction. So I'm going to have the ln of 19,541.06 over 17,000. So it gets a little complicated because there's so many fractions. So be careful when you're entering this. 1.01. .01. And then I end up with 3.49999791 as time. And it does say do not round until the final answer, which I've done. Then round to the nearest tenth. So this 9 will change that to a 5. So it'll be 3.5 years. And so I'm going to put that here, 3.5. OK. Let's see the next one. This one says, a sample of 500 grams of radioactive lead 210 decays to polonium 210 according to the function here, where T is the time in years. 
Find the amount of radioactive lead remaining after three years, eight years, 20 years. So these problems are pretty simple. It's just a matter of plugging in the numbers that they've given me. So first plugging in three, then plugging in um, eight, and then plugging in uh, 20. So let's do that. 500 E negative 0.032 times three. And it says brought your answer to the nearest integer. So the two is not gonna change this. This is gonna be four, five, four. Now I'm gonna do it again, but this time I'm gonna plug in eight. So I get three, eight, seven. And then I'm gonna plug it again, but this time I'm gonna plug in 20. And I get two, this does round up, so two, six, four. Now part D says find the half-life. So if I'm starting off with 500, half of that would be 250. And so then I can divide by the coefficient to get the exponential part by itself. And I should end up with a half here. And then since it's an exponential base E, I want to use the log base E, which is LN on both sides. When I do that, I'm going to get LN of 1 half equal to, these cancel, negative 0.032T. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 0.032 so that I get t all by itself. And over here, I can type that in my calculator. So ln of 1 half over negative 0.032. And I get 21.6608, so on and so forth. And it does say round to two decimal places. So it's just gonna be 21.66 years. Okay. Now, I have run out of ink, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a pen here for this next problem. Um, so for the number 24, it says, the employee wants to invest this, so that's P, and in a pension plan, one investment offers 6% compounded quarterly. Another offers this percent compounded continuously. So that means we have to use E, right? Um, which investment will earn more interest in six years? So whichever one yields the bigger amount at the end will be the one we choose, right? Um, and then it says, how much more will the plan earn? So you do have to evaluate both so you can take that difference, okay? Um, so for number part A, let's do the first plan, right? We get A equals P, one plus R over N, and then T times N. It doesn't, oh yeah, it does tell me six years, in six years. So um, N times T. And so if I put all of that in the calculator, we have 60, 1, 2, 3, 1 plus 0 0.0525 over 4, and then raise it to the 4 times, not T, 6. I get 82047.25. The 8 will change that to 25 cents. Now the second plan um, is continuously. So 60,000 and then E to the R times T. So 60,000 E to the R times T. And I get 82215 point, that's gonna make it go to 56 cents. So after T years, which one will earn more interest? Um, the first plan.
or whatever the options are, but you'll need to select it from menu. And then it says, okay, see, look, here it is one, which one is the best one? You would say the first one was the one with the 6%. So you would say this, okay? Then for part B, they just want you to type in the number. So the better plan will earn this much more. So just subtract these. So take away 82047.25. It's 168.31. Okay. And that's the end of the review that's in my math lab. However, I do have a couple of extra problems that I do want to cover that will be similar to the ones on the test. Now, I know I've already hit 16 minutes, but I really don't want to record a whole nother video that's probably going to take five minutes. So I'm just going to kind of cover these. Now, pH, and they give you the formula and they give you the hydronium ion concentrate levels. So if we wanna find pH, it's just a matter of plugging in um, this number. And I can literally type all of that in the calculator. So negative log 2.1 times 10 raised to the four, get down, close my parentheses. And it, it tells me to always round to the, second dec the first decimal place. So this is 4.3. So that one's not too bad. Now, this one says find the hydronium concentrate level. So I know that the pH is 9.2, and but what I don't know is the hydronium ion concentrate. So that's where I'm gonna plug in my zero, okay? Um, and so then to solve for this log, you can't have a coefficient in front. So I do have to divide by negative one so I get negative 9.2 equals negative log, and I'm sorry, that would cancel the negative. So you would just have positive log of x. And then remember, a regular log means it's base 10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise both sides to the 10 exponential, and these will cancel, leaving me with x, and on the left-hand side, I get this. What is 10 raised to the negative 9.2. The calculator automatically gives it to you in scientific notation. So x is actually equal to 6.3, only round to one decimal place, times 10 to the negative 10. Now the last problem is a logarithmic problem. And so I wanted to talk about these because all the logarithmic problems that we saw in the review always had either all logs or they just had one log equal to a number. They never had a situation like this. And I noticed that in the um, test, there was a problem where you had logs, but then you also had a regular number. So what you have to do is you have to make it look like the, the ones that just have one log and then one number. You have to make this one look like that so you can do the same procedure. So I'm going to have to actually add this log over to the other side. And when I do that, the number is now by itself. But now I have this situation on the left. And that's okay because that situation we have dealt with before. If we're trying to make this one log, we can use our properties to make that one log. So you actually get one minus X times X. And then now you can do, since this is a log base five, you can do an exponential base five on both sides. That cancels this. And five to the one is just five. If I distribute my X, I get this. This is a quadratic, however, um, I want my, my x squared term to be positive, so I'm actually going to move both of the terms over to this side. And then I have my positive x squared, my negative x, and my positive 5. And this I can factor. Um, you could do the AC method if it takes you a little bit longer to do that, but it should be x minus 3 and x plus 2, which means I get 3 equal to x. 
and I get negative two equal to X. So I get my two answers. If you took it here and you did the quadratic formula, you would still get the same two values here. So if you don't wanna bother trying to factor it, you can always use a quadratic formula and you'll get the same two numbers. Now what I need to do is verify if one, both, or none of these are in fact a solution. So if I plug three into here, it gives me a positive argument, it's good. But when I plug three into here, I get one minus three, which is negative two. And that would be a negative argument, which I can't have. So that means this one is not a solution. When I plug in negative two in here, I get one minus negative two, which is actually one plus two, which is three. So it would be good in this argument. But when I plug it over here, um, I would get a negative two argument. And actually I should be looking at over here, these two guys, but notice that the arguments are still the same, so it really doesn't affect it. Um, but I would have a negative argument there, which means this guy is also not a good solution. So make sure you're checking them. They need to make the arguments positive. If both make the arguments positive, then both are solutions. If just one makes the argument positive, then only that one is a solution. In my case, neither one of them made um, a positive argument. So in my case, I would have no solution. And now we have finally finished the test three review.